So we're jumping into red. Um, we've done white, blue, black. It's red's turn on the stage. And, you know, this is all happenstance. But because all of these cards are numbered in alphabetical order, the first red card we're looking at is the namesake of the set. All will be one. This is the moment in the movie when they say the name of the movie. How exciting is that? But it's also like a five mana enchantment, so we'll see how exciting it is. All will be one is three red red for an enchantment at mythic rare. Whenever you put one or more counters on a permanent or player, all will be one deals that much damage to a target opponent, creature an opponent controls, or planeswalker an opponent controls. So if you put 10 counters on something, you can deal 10 damage to a player, a creature, or a planeswalker. That actually looks pretty awesome. It is five mana. So it's not going to be... We're, we'll have to wait and see how fast this format is. Um, generally, five mana is not something you want to put in... Um, yeah, five... This is, this is an amazing commander card. Thank you, Mocha, in chat. I don't have chat up on the screen right now um, for YouTube's sake, but uh, Mocha's mentioning that this card and many of the cards we've gone through would be amazing in commander, and I agree. I think that the design team at Wizards is definitely paying attention to the format that people are playing the most, um, but a five-mana card in a constructed deck is doable, Um if you're playing standard, if you're playing older formats, five mana is not really doable. Um, that's really expensive in a color that is notoriously bad at ramping. Um, but in limited, this could be a big limited bomb. Um, if you have ways to proliferate, if you have ways to, um, you know, add a bunch of counters. So the interesting thing is this says whenever you put one or more counters on a permanent or player, which means if you proliferate, you only get to put one counter on something. But if you put one counter on 10 different things, then you get to deal that 10 damage. So I think this is going to be a blowout card. Uh, if you're playing against someone who's playing red, this is a kill on sight card for sure. This is going to get way out of control really fast. Um, yeah, definitely worth the mythic rarity and the namesake of the set. Next up, we've got a week. Okay, one before we jump off of All Will Be One, I'm interested in this card thematically because this is a big story spotlight, obviously. Um, but both Elish Norn and Nissa are on this card as the story moments that it's talking about, referring to. Um, but neither of those characters are red, color identity wise. Uh, Nis is green, obviously, and Elish Norn is white. Um, but it's interesting that they would put this big story moment on a red card. Obviously, they wanted to have some sort of, um, you know, blindingly powerful enchantment in red. It's been a theme in the last few sets to have something that, you know, sparks damage uh, in enchantments for red. And I think that this one is the most powerful we've seen so far in the last few years. Uh, moving on, we will jump into Awaken the Sleeper. Three and a red for a sorcery. Gain control of target creature until end of turn. Untap that creature. It gains haste until end of turn. If it's equipped, you may destroy all equipment attached to that creature. So powerful in one specific scenario. Semi-powerful in all scenarios. I think that's pretty good. Next up, we've got Axiom Engraver. One in a red for a 1-3 Phyrexian Wizard creature. Axiom Engraver enters the battlefield with two oil counters on it. Tap it to remove an oil counter. Um, discard a card, then draw a card. So it's a nice um, little delve. I like that. Then we've got Barbed Batterfist. One in a red for an equipment artifact with four Mirrodin, so you get a red rebel creature token and attach this to it. Uh, equipped creature gets plus one, minus one, so your red rebel becomes a three one, and it has an equip cost of one. That's okay. 
if you're looking for equipment triggers, enters the battlefield, artifact triggers, that sort of thing, um, this might be a card you would include. Uh, but it's not that powerful, so I'm not too worried about it the way things sit right now. For Mirrodin, I loved Mirrodin. So for Mirrodin, to reiterate, is a new um, ability in All Will Be One. And what it means is that it's on artifacts or equipment, sorry. It's on most equipment pieces. Uh, if your equipment has for Mirrodin, then when you play this card, you create a 2-2 Red Rebel creature token and immediately attach this equipment to it. So you get a free token if you're equipment has for Mirrodin. It's basically a cheer and a chant for the rebellion that's trying to save Mirrodin from the final Phyrexian push. Next up we've got Blade Graft Aspirant. Two and a red for a 2-3 Phyrexian warrior creature with menace. That's a cool piece of art. There's not a lot of art in Magic the Gathering that has this kind of POV. I like it. Equipment spells you cast cost one less to cast. Nice. Activated abilities of equipments you control that target Blade Graft Aspirant cost one less to activate. So you get to cast things for cheaper and equip things for cheaper, which is awesome. It sounds like the Boros equipment deck is going to be very prevalent. Next up, we've got Blazing Crescendo. One in a red for an instant target creature gets plus three, plus one until end of turn. Exile the top card of your library until the end of your next turn. You may play that card. That's pretty cool. I like that. That's a really good um, instant card. Next up, we've got Cacophony Scamp. One red for a 1-1 Phyrexian Goblin Warrior. Whenever a Cacophony Scamp deals combat damage to a player, you may sacrifice it. If you do, proliferate. When Cacophony Scamp dies, it deals damage equal to its power to any target. So you can kill something else, do one damage, and proliferate all in one kind of fell swoop. That's pretty cool. And you've got this Phyrexianized Goblin creature in the art here. Very interesting. Next up, we've got Capricious Hellraiser. Three red, 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 so six mana for a 4-4 four, four Phyrexian Dragon creature. This spell costs three less to cast if you have nine or more cards in your graveyard. So it'll cost just three red for a 4-4 four, four Flying Dragon. When Capricious Hellraiser enters the battlefield, exile three cards at random from your graveyard. Choose a non-creature, non-land card from among them and copy it. You may cast the copy without paying its mana cost. So that's quite a few steps, um, but it's an interesting way to get a free instant sorcery uh, artifact enchantment kind of thing. I don't, I don't mind that. Next up, we've got Chimney Rabble. Three and a red for a 3-3 three, three Phyrexian Goblin Warrior with haste. When Chimney Rabble enters the battlefield, create a 1-1 one, one red Phyrexian Goblin creature token. That's not bad. Next up, we've got Churning Reservoir, one red for an artifact. At the beginning of your upkeep, put an oil counter on another target non-token artifact or creature you control. Then for two mana and tap, create a 1-1 one, one red Phyrexian Goblin creature token. Activate only if an oil counter was removed from a permanent you controlled this turn or a permanent with an oil counter on it was put into a graveyard. Interesting. Next up, we've got Dragon Wing Glider. Three red red for an artifact equipment with four Mirrodin. Equipment creature gets plus two, plus two, and has flying and haste. And the equip cost is five mana. So it's five to cast and five to equip. Interesting. Very expensive. Um, but there's already some things in red that make equipment cost cheaper. So might be interesting. Exuberant Fuseling is next. For one red, you get an 0-1 Phyrexian Goblin Warrior with Trample. Exuberant Fuseling gets plus one, plus O for each oil counter on it. When Fuseling enters the battlefield or whenever another creature or artifact you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, put an oil counter on Exuberant Fuseling. So this is a one mana 0-1 
uh, with Trample that's going to progressively get more and more powerful uh, as the game goes on. Uh, this is a fun little uh, thing to play if you're playing red. It's kind of like mid-range aggro. Because if you play this on turn one, it's good. But it's going to be better by turn four. So you want to get it on the board early. But it doesn't really do much until a little bit later. Next up, we've got Forge Hammer Centurion. Two and a red for a 3-2 Phyrexian Warrior creature. Whenever another creature or artifact you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, put an oil counter on Forge Hammer Centurion. When Forge Hammer Centurion attacks, you may remove two oil counters from it. When you do, target creature can't block this turn. That's okay. It's kind of boring. There's a lot of text for not a lot of action. Uh, next up, we've got Free From Flesh. One red mana for an instant. Target creature gets plus two, plus oh. Or, sorry, plus two, plus two until end of turn. Put two oil counters on it. So that's that's interesting. Furnace. Actually, this card mixed with that little fuseling guy is pretty good. This thing gets plus one, plus oh for each oil counter on it. Um, and this puts two oil counters on something. That's pretty awesome. Next up, we've got Furnace Punisher. Two and a red for a 3-3 Phyrexian Warrior with Menace. The beginning of each player's upkeep, Furnace Punisher deals two damage to that player unless they control two or more basic lands. Interesting little twist. I wonder if that's going to see any play. Next up, we've got Furnace Strider. Four and a red for a 4-5 Phyrexian Beast creature. Uh, Strider enters the battlefield with two oil counters on it. Remove an oil counter from Furnace Strider. Target creature you control gains haste until end of turn. So this thing just hands out haste as long as you can proliferate and keep its oil counters up. And we've got Gleeful Demolition for one red sorcery. Destroy target artifact. If you controlled that artifact, create three 1-1 one, one Phyrexian Goblin creature tokens. Interesting. That'll be fun. Next up, we've got Hazardous Blast. Three and a red for a sorcery. Hazardous Blast deals one damage to each creature your opponent controls. Creatures your opponents control can't block this turn. Fun. Then we've got Hex Gold Halberd. One and a red for an artifact equipment with four Mirrodin, so you get a red rebel creature token. As long as it's your turn, equipped creature has first strike and trample. Nice. Not too bad. Equip cost is three, but again, we can make that cheaper with some additional cards. Next up, we've got Hex Gold Slash. This is cool art. This is a little different than what we've seen on these cards so far. Oh, it's Eli Manaya again. I love their art so far. Um, one red for an instant. Hex Gold Slash deals two damage to target creature. If that creature has toxic, Hex Gold Slash deals four damage to that creature instead. That's pretty good. There's a lot of creatures with toxic. One mana, two damage, or one mana, four damage on something with toxic. I'll take those odds any day. Next up, we've got Koth Fire of Resistance. One of the planeswalkers that survives the uh, infiltration of new Phyrexia. Two red red for a four loyalty planeswalker. Plus two, search your library for a basic mountain card. Reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle. Minus three, Koth deals damage to target creature equal to the number of mountains you control. Minus seven, you get an emblem with whenever a mountain enters the battlefield under your control, this emblem deals four damage to any target. That's a pretty good, pretty good ultimate ability, I would say. Um, and you can do it on turn three. Or on the third turn that you have Koth out. You play him for four. Uh, you plus two him immediately. Put a mountain uh, into your hand. Plus two him the next turn. Put another mountain into your hand. Then minus seven him the turn after. And you've got, um, you know, two mountains in your hand that will trigger this ability immediately. I like that. 
Next up, we've got Koldotha Cackler. Oh, I almost got excited. I thought this was going to be a dog for a second. Uh, two and a red for a 2-3 Phyrexian Hyena. I know. How many hyenas are there in Magic? I'm looking this up. I'm looking it up. Because what? It always throws me off when uh, they add new text type line creature hyena oh oh no okay there are six cards in all of magic including this one that have hyena as a creature type line and one of them isn't from an unset and one of them is a commander only card so there's not a lot of hyena tribal <laughs> um so phyrexian hyena is a two three with trample whenever the cackler attacks it gets plus x plus o until end of turn where x is the number of permanents you control with oil counters on them so they love a good oil counter I, I can appreciate that. Magmatic Sprinter. Two and a red for a 3-2 Phyrexian Warrior with haste. I was going to say, if this card doesn't have haste on it and its name is Sprinter, I'm going to be mighty upset. Uh, when Magmatic Sprinter enters the battlefield, put two oil counters on target artifact or creature you control. Red has a lot of oil counter synergy. I like it. At the beginning of your end step, return Magmatic Sprinter to its owner's hand unless you remove two oil counters from it. Interesting. So you have to keep casting this, but every time you cast it, you can put two oil counters on something. That's a really interesting little line. Uh, next up, we've got... Oh, another one of these off. Oh, it's Eli again. I love it. Molten Rebuke. Four and a red for a sorcery. Choose one or both. Molten Rebuke deals five damage to a target creature or planeswalker or destroy target equipment. So for five mana, you can deal five damage to something and destroy target equipment or just do one or the other. Uh, next up, we've got Nahiri's Sacrifice. One and a red for a sorcery. As an additional cost to cast this spell, sacrifice an artifact or creature with mana value X or less. Nahiri's Sacrifice deals X damage to divide it as you choose amongst any number of target creatures. Dang. As an additional cost to cast this spell, sacrifice an artifact or creature with mana value X. So the X translates into how much damage it deals. So you get to choose um, if you sacrifice something with two mana value, then you can deal two damage divided as as you choose, if you sacrifice something with 10 mana value, you can deal 10 damage to amongst any number of target creatures. Pretty cool. Next up, we've got Oxida Finisher. Ox Oxida Finisher. Five red red for a 7-5 Ogre Rebel. So this is one of those things you would want to sacrifice with that previous card. Um, it has affinity for equipment. This spell costs one less to cast for each equipment you control, and it has trample. So if you have five pieces of equipment on the battlefield, then you get a 7-5 for two mana. That's pretty crazy. Boros equipment is popping off. Guys, mark my words. Heed my warning. Boros equipment is popping off. Next up, we've got Rebel Salvo. Two and a red for an instant with affinity for equipment. Rebel Salvo deals five damage to target creature or planeswalker. That permanent loses the indestructible until end of turn. What? You can remove an indestructible protection from something and deal five damage to it. And it has an affinity for equipment, so this can cost one mana. That is crazy. Next up, we've got the red version of Sun's Twilight. X red red for a sorcery. Destroy up to X target artifacts. If X is five or more for each artifact destroyed that way, create a token that's a copy of it. 
Those tokens gain haste, exile them at the beginning of the next end step. So this is a full party game finisher. This is a powerful card. I would put this above the black one. So right now we have white number one, blue number two, red number three, black number four in terms of power. Resistance Sky Warden. Three red red for a 5-5 five, five creature ogre rebel with menace and reach. Nice. Just a juicy big boy. Then we've got Sawblade Scamp. One red for a 1-1 one, one Phyrexian Beast with haste. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, put an oil counter on Sawblade Scamp. You can tap it, remove an oil counter from it. It deals one damage to each opponent. So a nice little pinger. I like that. Next up, we've got Shrapnel Slinger. One and a red for a 2-2 two, two artifact creature Phyrexian Beast with... When Shrapnel Slinger enters the battlefield, you may sacrifice a creature. When you do destroy target artifact and opponent controls, very interesting. Um, I don't mind that at all. Uh, next up, we've got Slow Bad Iron Golem. Slow Bad got Phyrexianized. No. Two and a red for a 3-3 Phyrexian Goblin Artificer Legendary Creature. Uh, Slow Bad has the ability to tap it. Sacrifice an artifact, add an amount of red mana equal to the sacrifice artifact's mana value. Spend this mana only to cast artifact spells or activate abilities of artifacts. Interesting. Next up, we've got Solfim, the Red Dominus. Two red red for a 5-4 Phyrexian Horror. If a source you control would deal non-combat damage to an opponent or permanent that opponent controls, it deals double that damage to that player or permanent instead. And then for one red red Phyrexian mana, you can discard two cards, put an indestructible counter on Solfim. This has got to be up there um, on the powered list for the Dominus cycle. This might be the most powerful one. Um especially as we've looked through a lot of this red color pie already and there's a lot of pingers there's a lot of things that deal non-combat damage uh this is going to be a big play it's only four mana so it's an auto include and constructed i think next up we've got a reprint of thrill of possibility one in a red for an instant as an additional cost to cast this spell discard a card and you draw two cards i like this card Thrill of Possibility is one of the best ways. Apologies for wiping my nose. Um, Thrill of Possibility has always been one of the best ways to draw cards in red. Um, and it helps that it lets you get rid of something you're not going to use or will use the least. Next up, we've got Urabras Anointer. Three and a red for a 4-2 Phyrexian Wizard. Artifact Creature. When Urabrask's Anointer enters the battlefield, it deals X damage to any target where X is the number of permanents you control with oil counters on them. So there's another non-combat damage source. Urabrask's Forge. Two and a red for an artifact. At the beginning of combat on your turn, put an oil counter on Urabrask's Forge, then create an X1 red Phyrexian Horror Creature token with Trample and Haste where X is the number of oil counters on Urabras Forge. Sacrifice that token at the beginning of the next end step. So every turn when your combat starts, you get a, a Phyrexian Horror. The next turn, it'll be one stronger. The turn after that, it'll be one stronger. So on and so forth. Um, this is also great for sacrifice outlets because, or sacrifice synergies because this automatically sacrifices that token at the beginning of your end step. Very cool. Very powerful artifact. Uh, Vindictive Flame Stoker. One red for a Phyrexian Wizard. One toughness, or one power, two toughness. Whenever you cast a non creature spell, put an oil counter on Vindictive Flame Stoker. Then for six and a red, you can sacrifice Vindictive Flame Stoker, discard your hand, then draw four cards. This ability costs one less to activate for each oil counter on it. That's pretty cool. I like that. Volt Charge. Two and a red for an instant. Volt Charge deals three damage to any target. Proliferate. Pretty cool. 
Also non-combat damage, so you could double it with that uh, legendary creature, that Dominus. Uh, last up for red is the Volshock Splitter. Three and a red for an artifact equipment with four Mirrodin. So you get that red rebel token. Equipped creature gets plus two, plus O, oh, and its equip cost is two and a red. Not bad. So there's lots of sacrifice outlets. There's lots of um, oil counter synergies in red, which is really cool. Um, the Red Sun's Twilight is pretty powerful. Also, there's a lot of Eli Manaya art in, in red, and I really love their art style. I think there's some some interesting stuff in here. I'm not a red player very much, like at all. Um, but there's some spell synergies in here. There's some artifact synergies. There's some pinger synergies. Um, and obviously equipment. The Boros equipment deck is looking to be mighty spicy. Um, especially for limited. I don't know if it's going to be able to hang... Um, with the current standard meta, um, but obviously standard meta is